Welcome to Pharmacology! In this part B, we'll talk about uh, more on the drugs used for PUD. So here we'll only focus on two classes of drugs, uh, which is the H2 antagonist and also the proton pump inhibitor. So just a reminder, this is what peptic ulcer disease is all about. Right, so this is uh, the four main um, H2 receptor blockers which are currently used in the market so they're all end with all the tidin 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 so you can see that there's a variation of the potency between these four drugs so simotidin is like the first drug that is in the is in the category so then they improvise the structure and make it more and more potent so simotidin ranitidin which is which are the more commonly used one in the market Right, so you can see here. So this is the dosage, and it's always being have to be used in twice daily form. And yeah, so you can see that it can um, the three of this are also available in the infusion form. Right, so the mechanism of action of these drugs are it actually works reversibly and also competitively that inhibits the binding of histamine to the receptors to suppress the gastric acid secretion. So as a result, it also indirectly reduces the gastrin and ACH, which is the acetylcholine-induced gastric acid secretion. So therefore, H2 antagonists are especially useful for the basal and meal-stimulated acid secretion. This we'll look through further in the graph later on in the next three slides. Okay, so again, just to emphasize the differences in the potency, and also bear in mind that simotidine and ranitidine, they're also the inhibitors for the CYP, uh, P450 and metabolic enzyme. So therefore, there's quite a bit of interaction of it with some other drugs. So do check it out uh, in the BNF. Right, so next we we'll talk about PPI, which is the proton pump inhibitor. So this is the, per the parietal cells, which you have seen it before in part A of the talk or the section. Right, so one of the examples of the PPI, which is the first one, uh, similarly, simil similarly like simotidine for H2 antagonist. So the first one, or the more common, commonly used one, is omiprazole. It's one of the weaker ones as well, in terms of potency. So the mechanism of action for PPI is slightly more complicated because it is actually a prodrug. Right, so how does it have? How does it act then? So this whole molecule of omiprazole or the PPI have to cross through um, the membrane of the parietal cells and it has to be stuck here <coughs> at the canaliculus of the cell. So what happens is that wait, where's my okay so this PPI will actually be converted into the ionized which is the protonated form within the canaliculus therefore it causes a selective accumulation of the drug in this specific small space. So upon as exposure to the acidic environment, it changes into this form, right? Which can rapidly form a covalent, which is an um, irreversible bonding with the proton pumps, which is this one, which is the H plus K plus ATPase, right? So it forms this stable irreversible bond, right? Therefore, <clears throat> the action of uh, PPI is slightly longer because of this covalent bond, right? So uh, it's commonly found under the delayed or enteric coated form because you can imagine that you actually need the drug uh, to enter the cells first and to be trapped specifically at this component, right? Because it can be um, protonated, right? But do you bear in mind that in the stomach environment itself, in the lumen up there, it's also at a similar pH condition. So therefore, you want to protect the drug slightly so that it should be protonated over here for where the site of action of the drug is. Right, so can you crush the tablets? Have a read, have a think about it, right? So these are the few other drugs which is in the category. So there's omiprazole, isomiprazole, which are both um, what you call stereoisomers. So there's lansoprazole, pentoprazole, and romi robeprazole. So pentoprazole is also another favorite uh, member of the family being used, right? So uh, because it actually inhibits the final final step of the um, proton secretion into the stomach, so it actually has a more um, non-selective effect whereby it also inhibits the fasting 
and also the meal stimulated acid secretion. So bioavailability is reduced 50% by food. So the advisable advice, uh, advisable thing is that uh, the, the patient should actually take uh, the PPI drugs about half an hour or an hour before meal, meaning before breakfast actually, uh, because there's also um, the theory that um, this PPI actually need the secretion, <coughs> the acid secretion to function to occur, to have to exert this effect. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? So it has the it has most effect, most effective when the proton pumps are actually active, right? So therefore, if you take it like half an hour, an hour before meal, so when the meal when the person is eating by that time, so whereby there's also the meal stimulated acid secretion. So the drug which is taken normally orally, right? It takes some time to reach its peak concentration. So you want the timing whereby the drug, when the drug hits the peak concentration is when the first meal is just started and you have maximal activity of your proton pumps. So then, therefore, the effect of the PPI will be its, at its optimum level. Is it okay? Right, so the half-life of PPI in the whole body system is actually quite short. But the inhibition of the acid secretion is about 24 hours because the binding of it, as mentioned in the previous slide, is actually an irreversible binding, right? So therefore, you can actually take it OD, so which is more convenient. Right, so the side effects are, uh, for example, uh, vitamin B12 absorption would be impaired, actually, uh, because vitamin B12 actually needs an acidic environment in the stomach to be absorbed effectively. So imagine if someone is on PPI, so obviously the uh, gastric acid secretion will be minimized or reduced greatly, right? So the pH of the stomach will actually be higher than usual, right? So and another important side effect is that um, the PPI normally is taken in the short term, uh, but what happens is that when the person stops PPI, uh, will actually uh, experience and rebound acid secretion because imagine if you stop all the if you stop the proton pumps then when you when you stop taking the drug so these proton pumps will actually uh, stimulate an increased level of secretion so yes um, because when the person is taking the PPI um, the gastrin level right it actually causes hypo hyperplasia of the cells due to the normal um, <coughs> adjustment of the body so wait so i rephrase myself so basically um when the body sense that uh, the, the stomach is actually secreting lesser amount of acid than usual than required because remember ppi inhibits the acid secretion so the body senses it and try to rectify and balance it back so one of the ways that will increase the gastrin level in the body to cause an hyperplasia of this uh, of these cells, right? So when there's hyperplasia, meaning there's more of it, so there should be more proton pumps so that it can sort of stimulate it's still more acid because the body sense that this is abnormal. So when this increase in the proton pump happens and when the person stops taking PPI, so you can imagine there'll be more acid secretion than previously, right? So yeah, there'll be some short-term rebound acid secretion. But later on, um, the, the, again, the body will self-adjust and try to reduce it back to normal, right? Another thing is that um, <coughs> there's also some intera drug interaction involving PPI. So again, you check it out in BNF as well, right? Okay, so let's go through this graph slightly. So this one hopefully explains clearer what are the differences between PPI and also H2 antagonists. So let's go through the red color graph first. So this is the normal control. So you can see that <coughs> mm, the acidity, right? So the acidity reduces slightly upon breakfast, right? Because in a way, um, it's diluted. So wait, so yeah, acidity, acidity reduces. So there's more food in there. And then obviously the body will respond by secreting more acid. So again, it goes up, right? And then there's food. So it hits maximum and it goes down again. Right, and so on and so forth. So something to take note about here is actually this part of the graph, which is what we call a nocturnal acid secretion. So this happens under the normal physiological, like what happens to you and me, 
right so even though there's no you might be taking a light snack light snack or you might not be t- taking anything m- might not be eating anything here uh, there will still be an increase <coughs> in gastric acid secretion at night so you can see you'll most likely be sleeping around at least this few hours right so it peaks around here and goes down so therefore there are some people who actually um, could experience all this um, gastric heartburn and symptoms like that around at night as well right so therefore remember the h2 blocker which is a h2 antagonist so the effect of it is mainly reducing the effect of acid secretion in response to meal as you can see it goes down here it goes down here and so on so um, overall there are there some still some acid secretion ongoing which is actually still Im- quite important because remember the enzymes the digestive enzymes in the stomach actually requires to work at the optimum level under acidic conditions right so <coughs> some level of acid in um, acidity in the stomach is actually good for you right because it helps in the overall effi- efficiency of your food digestion and absorption later on but when you look at the effect of ppi over here assuming you're taking in the morning right so it's like it's super quite flat aligned so it's very very effective in a way but don't forget it also brings um, indirectly side effects like probably a little bit of indigestion as well because the your gastric enzymes could not work effectively effectively at all right but yeah it's used for short term anyway most of the time Right, so therefore, H2 antagonist is effective in a way because it also reduces the nocturnal acid secretion, which is also he- which is here. Right, so which has a stronger acid suppressing effect? So I think the answer is quite obvious. Right, so now I'm trying to introduce two other concepts. So one is tolerance. Um, so for tolerance is that um, the therapeutic effect of a drug will actually reduce over time. If you give it continuously so this happens especially for h2 antagonists so because it actually stimulates um, the condition called secondary hypergastrinemia because then it sick um, stimulates more uh, histamine release uh, to sort of to fight against or to com- compete against the histamine um, antagonist drugs right because they're both histamine and histamine antagonists binds to histamine receptors right so tolerance uh, could actually be developed uh, within three days or, or it, there's more resistance with increasing of doses so you can see that the effect of h2 antagonist is actually very the most effective at the early stage of it then if you continue to take it you might feel that it seems to be not so effective anymore because um, our body sort of tolerated the effect of h2 antagonist so uh, for proton pump uh, inhibitor right it actually has not much of the effect of tolerance so this is good in a way so that's why it's used for the zollinger syndrome which i mentioned much earlier in part a because there's less um, likely to develop tolerance right uh, because the effect of it is on the final pro- final step of uh, proton excretion right into the a proton secretion into the stomach right so this whatever happens outside meaning whatever changes in the histamine and release and so on and so forth would not affect the final effect of ppi because that's too far away you as long as you block the final gate uh, whatever happens earlier on it doesn't matter anymore right the second concept here that i like to talk about is about rebound so rebound is when you stop the drug and the effect is increased um, so the effect of the acid secretion is double or increased at a higher level so there's increased as uh, gastric acidity when both h2 antagonists and ppi when it's both of them are discontinued right so thank you very much so these are the concepts of the rebound zone it is something that you should bear in mind that um, probably you have to talk to the patient when it's the first time on it okay thank you i'll see you in part c for the other few drugs. Okay, bye!